<laughs> Yo, have y'all ever been so broke that you had your identity stolen and returned to you on the same day? That's how I'm living. Thing is, like, I don't even want to be super rich. I just want to be wealthy enough that, like, when I finish pumping gas, I don't feel the need to just shake that shit out of the end, you know? That's a broke move. Rich people don't do that shit. I said that one time, and this guy in the crowd goes, I don't do it because I'm broke. I do it so it doesn't drip on my car. I was like, oh, word, you drive like a Range Rover or something? He goes, no, Pontiac Sunfire. <laughs> dude, shut your broke ass up. You're not better than me, man. I got a Nissan. I'm living, dude. It's fine. Uh, anyway, when I'm not doing this, I'm actually a social worker, believe it or not. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. I mean, normally they get a standing ovation, but thanks, guys. Whatever. I'm a social worker, but like I hate the people I work with, so if anything, I'm more of like an anti-social worker, you know? <laughs> like I work with this one lady, Rhonda. Once a week, dude, she'll pop her head in my office and just be like, hey, fuck this job. <laughs> 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 yeah, and you, Rhonda, get out. Stop talking to me, dude. She's always coming in my office asking me for things that I would never, like the other day she came in and asked if I had any WD-40. <laughs> what? I'm not a car mechanic, I'm a social worker. Also, what kind of psycho calls it WD-40? <laughs> it's WD-40, we can all agree on that, right? <laughs> Sounded like an undercover cop with a squeaky chair coming into my office, you know? Just like, pardon me, fellow coworker. Might you happen to have any WD-40? <laughs> you wearing a wire right now? Trying to snitch me out to HR? What's going on, dude? It blows my mind that I had to get a college degree to go into social work, because there is no money in that field. Like, dude, if I ever see my college advisor again, I'm gonna fuck him up. <laughs> that dude did not tell me I was getting a degree in poverty, you know? <laughs> it's like, no wonder social workers are so adamant about helping the poor. Yeah, bitch, that's us. <laughs> we are the poor. I used to have to take public transportation to work. People would come into my office, they're like, how do I get out of poverty? I was like, I don't know, dude. <laughs> we were just on the same bus. Why are you asking me? Yeah. You know how humiliating it is to have to get off at the same stop as your client? I'll tell you what, dude, when they see me, they lose faith real quick. <laughs> it's like, oh no, it's that guy that was crying on the bus. Come on in. <laughs> Deal with a lot of drug addiction in uh, social work. And I, I just want to say that uh, drug addiction is not a joke, but it's about to be, so buckle up. <laughs> yeah. Clearly the war on drugs is a failure. I think that we need to start thinking outside the box. And uh, I propose that we just change the names to the drugs that we have right now, because right now they just sound way too cool, you know? I think about it, you got Xanax, that's the coolest sounding word I've ever heard in my entire life. I might name my firstborn child Xanax, to be honest. Boy or girl, it's progressive. It's a genderless name, it's perfect. What else, you got heroin? It's got the word hero in it. Who doesn't want to be a hero, right? What else you got? You got crack? That's the sound a home run makes. That's the most American thing there is. Oh yeah. Methamphetamine? That sounds like it gives you superhuman strength. And I'm pretty sure it does. Because <laughs> one time I watched a meth head lift up the back end of a Dodge Neon just to scooch out a $5 bill. And uh, he's doing fine, I think. I don't know. Molly? I've never met a Molly I didn't like. That's like the most trustworthy name out there. You gotta give it like a dirtier name, you know? Like Nikki. I know you guys are like, Nikki with a Y or an I, but let's be honest, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> get away from that. Recently had my first medical scare and I did the worst thing possible. I looked up my symptoms on WebMD. Yeah, or as I like to call it, you're gonna die.com. Nobody ever gets good news from WebMD, you know? Like nobody's ever been like, why does my lower back hurt? And then WebMD's like, probably from carrying around that giant penis. Good for you, dude. <laughs> Yeah. Like, do the inside of your thighs hurt too? Because that thing is massive. No, instead they're like, you have back cancer. So good luck with that. So, oh yeah, so my big medical scare, I just had like really, 
really foamy urine. <laughs> Huge letdown, I know, you guys, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't mean like a drip drop, I mean like it looked like I cracked open a Bud Light and just dumped it directly into the toilet, it was alarming. But anyway, I put it in, came back as three things. I either have renal failure, kidney cancer, or an STD. Which means for the first time in my life, I was like, please be an STD, please be an STD. <laughs> Yeah, but I went to the doctor, it turns out I'm just super dehydrated. So yeah, <laughs> from the herpes. And uh, yeah, so. that being said, ladies, I am single. <laughs> yeah. And DTF, oh, yeah. down to fall in love. Long-term commitment, that's my fetish. That's what I'm into. Yeah. Some people like feet or getting shit on, but not this guy. No. Love and affection gives me an erection. That's what I like to say. Yeah. Yeah. Honesty and trust makes me bust. Uh, that's gross. <laughs> Obviously, I suck at dating. I'll probably do a lot better if I stop bringing up conspiracy theories on the first date. It's not a good look, you know? Yeah, I save that kind of conversation for marriage. <laughs> or at the very least, maybe throw some into your wedding vows on her big day, you know? Just standing up at the altar like, Dear Stacy, you are the most beautiful girl on the face of this flat earth. <laughs> the first time I saw you, it melted my heart, unlike jet fuel to steel beams. <laughs> Some of y'all got that, all right. <laughs> I trust you more than the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I promise to love you more than Joe Biden loves sniffing little girl's hair. <laughs> but I will probably never love you as much as Donald Trump loves grabbing women by the... And we know where I was going with that joke. That's, I don't have to finish that. I know you guys are like, those last two are a little bit more of a fact than a conspiracy, and you'd be right. Also, that is a bipartisan joke, so you can't get mad. That's, that's why I wrote it. <laughs> Recently got a Tinder account. Any fellow uh, Tinderonis in the building tonight? <laughs> Just me? All right, cool. It's like online dimes, real life nickels. That's what we are in Tinder, yeah. Because nobody on there is their true self. Like maybe their best self, but not who they really are. Like even me standing in front of you guys right now, you're like, I'll give them a six on a good day. But if I pop this hat off, you're like, oh shit. <laughs> this dude's been an undercover three the whole time. We've been swindled. It's like hat on, knight in shining armor. Hat off, creepy dude in the corner. It's, it's not good. People always act so shocked when I take my hat off. It's like, what did you expect? My sideburns stop right here and never connect to anything ever again. One time I was at a bar and this drunk chick came up to me and she's like, I want to wear your hat. Takes it right off my head and goes, <gasps> I am so sorry and put it right back on my head. It made me feel like my hat was a toupee, and that's not cool <laughs> at all. Then her friend was like, don't worry about her. I'm oddly attracted to bald men. <laughs> oddly? <laughs> what kind of backwards ass compliment is that? <laughs> I did manage to match with this one Spanish mamacita, this sexy senorita, if you will. And uh, we've been texting back and forth, and this morning I wanted to say something in Spanish to show her that I care. So I texted her, I was just like, hola. There's more. <laughs> it's like, hola, buenos dias, como estas? And I sent it to her. But what I didn't realize is it had auto-corrected. <laughs> to hola, buenos dias, come eat ass. <laughs> As you can see, she has not texted me back. So. <laughs> part of me wants to message her again and explain what happened, but then there's another part of me that kind of just wants to let that one play out, you know? <laughs> just saying, I've never had my booty eaten, but I hear it's muy bien, so. <laughs> All right, that's it for me, guys. Thank y'all so much. Y'all have a wonderful night. <laughs>